This program is proudly brought to you by the Dan O'Connell Hotel. Whether it's our function room or Wednesday night trivia, the Dan is the pub for everybody. Amazing. Amazing. Tonight on Community Kitchen, Tegan Hickenbotham joins us at the Dan O'Connell Hotel in Carlton making what might be the most amazing dish we've seen thus far on Community Kitchen. We have a chat about her time hosting the 2014 Antenna Awards and we are treated to a special instrumental performance from the man who wasn't there. I'm Laura Davis. Today we're in Carlton at the Dan O'Connell Hotel. We are cooking with Tegan Hickenbottom. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Later on we're going to hear a song from Andrew Watson, otherwise known as the man who wasn't there. But first we are making... What are we making? We are making Julia Child's chocolate souffle. Okay, you said that with no confidence. I have no confidence. <laughs> have you made it before? <laughs> no, I've never made a souffle before. Okay, and me neither. Uh, I've what could go wrong? <laughs> everything. I've basically chosen one of the difficult, most difficult cookbooks, uh, which is Mastering the Art of French Cooking by Julia Child, and then gone through and picked the most difficult recipe in it. And okay. it's going to be great. Have you watched Julia and Julia? Yeah. Well, then we'll be, we'll be fine. We'll so be fine. She says that you've just got to do it. You've got to hold the duck. Uh, so I'm just going <laughs> to hold the duck or the chocolate and be confident. Because that's right. what she says works. Well, let's start. Let's do this. Do right. it straight away because it's going to be more difficult. I'm going to roll up my sleeves. That's how committed I am to this one. All right. So we need chocolate. We also need coffee for some reason in this chocolate soup. Okay. Made, which makes it already fancier than anything I've made. Okay. Because I've never made anything with coffee in it before. So what, what's brought you on your Julia Child fascination? I've got a few films that are kind of my comfort food films. Mm -hmm. You know when you're in a shit mood and you just yeah. need one of those things? All of them I found either revolve around Paris food or both. Okay. Uh, the three films are Chocolat, Midnight in Paris, Woody Allen's film, uh -huh. and Julia, and Julie and Julia. Emily? You see, the funny thing with Emily is I didn't love it the first time I watched okay. it. I know I need to go back. You and don't, there is no, there's no rule. I know, I think I do though, because I've just started seeing somebody who loves Emily, like considers it in his top, okay. top, top films. Well. And uh, so I just feel like a bit of a monster for not, <laughs> for not liking it. So I definitely do need to go back there on Watch that your one. French whimsy some more. Yeah, exactly. But um, I do love food a lot. Yeah. And so watching people make it and make it well is very exciting for me. So you were watching Paris and French movies and then just went... Yeah, I just love them. And the funny thing is, is when I actually went to Paris the very first time, I've only been once, I didn't, I didn't love it. Mm -hmm. um, there were bits of it. It's like Emily. Was, Did you go again? Well, no, I need to though, and I'm hoping next year to go okay. back. And I think what it was is um, I went with a lovely friend of mine, and she was, she was studying in Manchester mm -hmm. at the time, and kind of gave me this call from Manchester one night going, I'm having a terrible time in the UK, mm -hmm. please come over. So I just kind of on a whim went, all right, I'm coming over. And within a month, I'd booked this flight to go over to London and then to head over to Paris with her. Mm. The problem is, is she was just having a moment. So by the time I got <laughs> over there, she was fine. She was absolutely fine. And more than that, really behind in her uni work. So yes. uh, we were over in Paris and she spent a lot of the time... Um, in her room studying because she had exams coming up. Ah. So that kind of... I did Paris by myself, you which were, was fine. You were like Carrie Bradshaw in the last episode of Sex and the yeah, City. Yeah, and I watched that episode after I'd been to Paris <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> it was me. But more than that, uh, what I learned... By the way, I'm just smearing this no, butter on with my I don't think we need to tell the audience what you are doing right oh, now. Oh, God. Um, but more than that, what I learned about Paris is that it is beautiful and the mm. architecture is amazing and the food is amazing and the women are amazing over there. They just look divine all the time. The men are a little bit full on. The men in Paris are a tiny little bit full on. Uh, like, like how? Well, if we're going to generalise on television. Let's. They, <laughs> they seem to know most words in the English language except for no, which oh. is really strange. Yeah, uh, they're, just, they're super pushy. And this is like the only word I know in French, so that's handy. Yeah. I can probably no. still go. So, um, yeah, from being over there, I'd go out at night and kind of have these really, really pushy 
French guys just being really, really pushy, and that freaked me out because I was a lot younger at the time. <coughs> and um, and then we'd be kind of doing a lot of sightseeing during the day, so didn't yeah didn't have the best experience. But I still have a feeling that it might be my my spirit homeland. Okay. So I definitely do need to go back. You should and I'm, take a souffle with you. I'm get gonna, on their good side. I'm gonna take a souffle and a and a man, regardless of whether he's a friend or anything, just so I can walk around with him the whole time. Um, I think that could make a difference to Paris. Yeah, it's actually. probably the only rule. Yeah. Uh, so where so are we up to? That you were, oh, we are here. So we're now mm -hmm. getting the flour mixture ready. So we've got to put that over heat, which seems weird. Are we to making do. a roux? Good sure. It's just know. flour and milk. So we're going to make that until it's kind of creamy ish. Do you want to actually stir yeah, that? Yeah, I can do that. Maybe with the whisk? Yep, that would be amazing. So this you're is just going to keep stirring that. Maybe the first guest who's really made a thing. Really? Yeah. What have I think, been I think then? Neil Sinclair in first series May. Oh, I remember that episode. Yeah, he did that. That was pretty intense. Yeah. <laughs> Seen a lot of like assembly ones. Yeah, like right. Those. If you're going to fail, you've got to fail big. Yeah. You know what I mean? Alright, so I'm going to chuck that in mm -hmm. there as well. Great. I gave up chocolate for a month and it was miserable. No, why, why would you do that? I don't know. Well, actually, I do know because I've eaten that much chocolate, I've actually damaged my teeth. Oh. I've got bad teeth anyway, and so I was told to kind of ease down on the chocolate. Is that, but really, when they say things that are bad for your teeth, chocolate's not like on the top of the list either. Uh, it's not. Biscuit and cakes are worse for your teeth because they stick to the teeth more. But I tried. I figured, you know, I eat too much chocolate. I reckon it makes up a quarter of my dietary intake. Yeah. I should probably ease up on that shit. Very unhappy. Yeah, very, very no, unhappy. no fun. All right, I'm just going to check. So once that's done... Stir at moderate heat until boiling. So once that's boiling, you've got to keep stirring for two minutes and remove from the heat. Okay. And I am going to get cracking on. Oh! I ripped my recipe. Uh, it's okay. I was over the top happy. Yeah. That's all right. right. I can still read it. This is if this is the worst disaster, then I'm feeling really, <laughs> really confident. Yeah. All right. So now I've got to get cracking onto the eggs. What pushed you uh, towards boxing as a as a recreational hobby? Um, three years ago, I decided to write a show about boxing. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote my very first solo show for Comedy Festival called Million Dollar it. Tegan. I did you. Yeah, it was oh, great. Thank you. And it was just one of those things. I'd always been interested in boxing. I'd always been a little bit of a tomboy. Mm -hmm. And it was just the timing was right. I heard from this guy who could train me up in a, in a limited amount of time. Um, Oh. And that would actually guarantee that I would have a fight. Yeah. And I think that's a rare thing to find. And it, it happened to coincide with the time when I was looking to write my new show. So mm -hmm. it all just seemed a little bit too perfect to ignore. And then I just fell in love with this boxing gym. I think, uh, other than the fact that it's just an exercise that's really clicked with me, mm. the people are just very different from the usual people that I interact with. Yeah. Because I'm, when you're in the arts, you can. <laughs> <laughs> find that most of your friends are artists and I forget that there are people out there who don't vote for Labour and who or aren't, the Greens. Or the Greens or who aren't feminists or you know Oh who, man, those people. Those people it's terrifying. They sometimes. exist. And you forget that because all your friends are artists and you all think the same. Yes. So when you don't win an election you go, but But ow, how my but Facebook did, feed is I all checked. everybody <laughs> voted for the same thing. So it's been a really good thing to just kind of go into an environment where um where nobody mm. nobody cares about artsy stuff, so it's yeah. really uh, it's really good, I think. So we're making Julia Child's chocolate souffle. What have we got left to do? So we've got to do the eggs. Mm -hmm. If you could work on the egg whites, so I can amazing. get them nice and peaky. Peaky is the word. That's, That's beautiful. Just the word. And I'm going to work on getting the egg yolks into this flour mixture, mm -hmm. then folding in the chocolate, and then it should all come together and make souffle. Alright, so we're going to do all of that and we'll see you after the break on Community Kitchen with a perfectly made chocolate okay. souffle.
welcome back to Community Kitchen. Today we're at the Dan O'Connell Hotel in Carlton. We're having a chat with Tegan Higginbotham. Hey. Hey. You hosted the Antenna Awards. I did. Yeah. Which was Pretty wonderful. Did you have fun? I did, yes. I did. Because we've been having a little bit of a chat lately about uh, the importance of community television. I know that people, you know, always discuss the, the big names that have come out of community television like Rove and Hamish and Andy mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. I know that I personally got a lot from being, uh, from my time doing Studio A on community television. Yeah. You just have room to, to creatively try stuff and, and make some mistakes in front of the camera and that is invaluable. But I think also for everybody behind the camera as well, yeah. it's, you need this sort of stuff so you can actually build a career. It's a whole new set of skills for everybody yeah. to learn to transition into television. So it's a whole new set of skills and it's yep. nice to have a place um, to learn it. The thing I found interesting was um, a lot of people think that uh, they're cutting the government funding, yep. but it's not. Community television is not funded by the government other than the fact that they own the lease on the station yeah um so they're looking at selling that off to the highest bidder so really they're not going to be saving money it's a money it's a revenue thing yeah so they're not losing money from community kitchen no it's <laughs> <No. laughs> good to know except for the waste of ingredients of my souffle doesn't work out it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine um i think that what is really important as well i hosted uh as well as the antenna awards mm -hmm. i also hosted a film festival not too long ago the bayside film festival there was a lot of student films there yeah and people were asking me if i had any advice for people trying to get into the industry and the only thing i can say that i found is it's about having a body of work not necessarily a degree or something behind mm -hmm. you people want to see that you've been creating and that you've been actually on the ground doing stuff mm. community television provides room for people to be on the ground working yeah. and I think that if you take that away a lot of people aren't going to have avenues to build their careers and no. it's going to be it's going to be a really big shame. Got a bit of, a bit I got chocolate, chocolate on me, I know. I actually realised the other day, uh, I counted, <coughs> <coughs> it sounds weird but I was, I've was i moved recently and I was putting all no, my clothes No, I don't want the clothes. context first, start okay. with the sentence. I counted all my clothes and I realised that 15% of my clothes have chocolate on them. <laughs> well, you said that that makes up one quarter of your diet. Yeah, so, so you're it's still actually, I'm still actually doing yeah. okay. I'm cleaner than I Less am. Less than a quarter of your clothes yeah. have chocolate. There's a lot of chocolate yeah. on my clothes, though. My God, it's not a good thing. I brought out a pair of shorts the other day that I wore last summer and mm -hmm. hadn't washed, and they're just covered in chocolate. And it doesn't look like chocolate anymore either mm -hmm. because it's been in a cupboard for a year. It's looking pretty sus. Yeah, and that's okay. It's a suspicious colour on Sus pants, especially. Suspicious pants <laughs> chocolate. You've made quite a fancy souffle. I You've taken Community Kitchen to the next level. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I want a, I want a crock and bush next week from I'm whoever's bring it on. on. I know. Yeah. They're going to bring in a ham sandwich and you're going to be like, oh, <sighs> ham sandwich. It's funny because I wasn't actually raised on fancy food for a long time. Mm -hmm. In fact, I remember the first time my mum tried to make fancy food. She uh, she made a spaghetti bolognese and um uh my exotic i know and my granddad came over and he refused to eat the <laughs> dish because it was foreign yeah he's like what is this what is this fancy foreign food he wouldn't eat it the spaghetti bolognese so we were brought up you know i was raised on baked beans and veggie yeah. as a child what uh, was the first thing you learned how to cook i think it was actually just muffins mm -hmm. i know how to make a very good very quick chocolate banana muffin and uh and then it kind of just went out from there and then donna hay did this this whole magazine of hers it was just on yeah. cupcakes everything the whole magazine was just cupcakes and I spent a couple of days just doing you know when you do the fancy icing and you make the flowers I did yeah. that and it was it was really fun I think I, I learned scrambled eggs the first was like yeah right hot breakfast and then pavlova and they're still the two things that I can just just they can always we've had yeah, a good pav definitely it's actually harder to no do recipe than, no like probably literally with my eyes closed. Yeah, right. Uh, what are fears that you have conquered in recent times? Oh, that I've conquered. Because um, I've got my fears that still tag along all the time, which is like my basic one is snakes. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's even reading about them. I actually get quite anxious and I know that my heart rate goes what up. What about and stuff snakes like, on a plane? Oh, even worse. Snakes on a tram? I'm happier with that. <laughs> It's just, more a yeah, skate route. It's more of the speed of the snakes, really, that concerns me. To be, to be honest, uh, my stand-up goes through phases of me not caring and being super confident and I can get up on stage and it mm -hmm. doesn't matter what happens. And then, for no particular reason, it doesn't matter the size of the gig, who's there, sometimes I just revert back to being 
terrified. Yeah. And I will be moments away from grabbing onto something and just going, I'm not going out there. <laughs> and it can be at Spleen on Burke Road in front of, you know, a packed mm. house there, or in another pub in front of five people. There's no... I don't know what the, the rule is. There's no rhyme or reason yeah. to it. Sometimes I just go back to being very nervous and having to then push through that and get on stage. I think that stand-up's a constant battle with me. Yeah. I've been told that there will come a day where I don't get freaked out by it anymore. I'm looking forward to that so much. <laughs> I get nervous before all of them. As soon as I get on stage, I feel fine. Yeah. But up until... Uh, that moment where you don't have control between where you know you have to go on, yeah. someone's about to introduce you, you can't escape, you can't not go on. You have, yeah, there's no, there's no time to tell somebody that you're yeah. sick or to get the lineup <coughs> changed up, you are going on next. Yeah. And I think the boxing, if it helps with one thing, when I'm boxing regularly, that fear is less. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily always go away, but I think especially if I've just come from training where I've been literally being hit in the head by somebody, stand up is fine. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> you know I mean? it's it's not, not the hardest job. It's not the hardest thing to no. do in the world. Yeah, so, you know, I get a lot out of boxing, but if anything, it's a good little moderator. And I think that's a, that's a good yes. thing to have found. If I could stand backstage at all time at stand-up clubs and have somebody there holding pads and I can just go, rah, yeah. I think that would be a very good thing. I get afraid of um, the dark more than I think. Really? Yeah, not so much in my house, but walking home in the dark, I don't enjoy. And it's not, it's not a Right, it's not like busy streets. If I walk past, yeah, just a dumb, not, not, not in there. I have an interesting story about the dark. Uh, now, this is a long story yeah. that I'm going to cut very short. But my little sister, a little while ago, came out and told everybody that she could see ghosts, mm -hmm. that she'd been able to see them her whole life. She has a couple of stories that have that have rattled me. I don't know where I sit on the ghost things, but her mm -hmm. stories are. The coincidences are strange. Yeah. Yes. The one thing, though, that no, got me about... Scared of this. It was just... In my old house where I grew up, there used to be this one corridor that we had to walk through. No, the ghost the corridor. It was the ghost corridor. I didn't... I just assumed that because this corridor was slightly darker than the rest of the house, and generally a little bit cooler than the rest of the house, I attributed that to why I felt weird walking through there. Yeah. And when I went through there, I'd always get this tickling in the pit of my stomach that made me want to run. And it was like, it's two metres. There was no room. But I just felt uncomfortable being in that room, uncomfortable. My sister, after she told us all about what she saw, without me prompting her at all, she's like, in, in our old house, in the corridor, there was an old man in there and he was always angry. And I was just like, because I had felt that feeling in that room. It had definitely, there had been something scary in there. And she's like, there was somebody in that room all the time. There was somebody in that room. All the time? All the time. Oh, man. That's some afterlife. Just just sit in that room just forever. Just sitting in that room in Dandenong. Angry. What are you doing? I'm very depressed. He's probably mad that that was his afterlife. Oh, yeah, man. Exactly. Is sit in this room, watch these kids. And walk them through again. They did nothing. Get out of my room. What happened in that room of all the rooms to haunt? Oh, like, man. Like, walk around and then you can watch the television at least. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> Tips for any ghosts out there, always haunt the lounge room. Yes. Um, well, we're going to go try your tasty souffle. Yes. Fingers crossed it Fingers comes so out of the crossed. oven, all right? Come on, Julia Child. Don't let me down. <laughs> and when we get back after break, we're going to hear a song from Andrew Watson, otherwise known as The Man Who Wasn't There. And we'll see you after the break on Community Kitchen. Hello, welcome back to Community Kitchen. We're at the Dan O'Connell Hotel in Carlton and we're about to taste Tegan's amazing chocolate souffle. It works! We've been sitting here for a while, not allowed to eat it, and now I it's know. finally the moment. Well, maybe you okay. should go first. Okay, you made it. I'm it's ready. like the texture feels right. I feel like this is what a souffle should be. This is be. what Julia Child would have wanted. This is what Julia Child would have wanted here. Yeah, it's really good. The fact that it actually worked and I mastered one of her trickier things. Mm. I feel really, really, That's really happy good. now. <laughs> you can't taste the coffee either. No, you can't taste the coffee. It's and a I was mystery. unsure about the coffee being in there. You can't actually no. taste it. So she was right. Well, for sure. the record, Julia Child's chocolate souffle. Amazing. Amazing. Make it, definitely make it. So and get the art of French uh, cooking, mastering the art of French cooking. I don't, I've never eaten a souffle before, so I don't know if this is I think what it's this supposed is to be. You. If it's not, that's how it should be made. And it popped really out and looked like a little chef's hat. Yeah. I think that's meant to be it yeah. as well. I've seen it in cartoons. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I think it's one of the best ones we've had on Community Kitchen so far. I win! It's pretty, you, well, we still have a few more episodes, but this is definitely, All right, it's definitely okay. the most edible. And thank you to the Dan O'Connell Hotel for having us. Thank you for watching Community Kitchen. We're going to take you out with a song from The Man Who Wasn't There.
This program is proudly brought to you by the Dan O'Connell Hotel. Whether it's our function room or Wednesday night trivia, the Dan